Welcome to A Look Ahead. We're delighted you decided to join us. We study the Sabbath School lessons as prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and this is a new series entitled Making Friends for God, the Joy of Sharing in His Mission. Not our mission, His mission. And this lesson, number one in that series, is entitled Why Witness? It's the lesson for July 4 of 2020. And as usual, we'd like to begin asking the Lord to guide us with a word of prayer. Our wonderful Father, we thank you again as we have opportunity to come together and discuss these very important lessons. May we see information here that will give us inspiration to move out and do something more for you is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I can assure you that there is nothing that God would love more than to have every single human being, one, respond to his love, two, accept what he offers, and three, be saved in his kingdom. God will weep over every sinner who chooses to rebel against him, even over Satan. Now, White says that after the fall, Satan came back and wanted to, begged Christ to let him come back in, and Christ said, I'm sorry, you are not, you're not, you're not really changed, you just want to re bring rebellion back to heaven, and he wept over that right there. He wants you and me to be saved. In fact, he wants to save us more than we want to be saved. So, do we share in God's desire that he has? Have you ever had the privilege of witnessing to someone and then have them make, having them make the decision to join God's church? Is there any, is there any joy equal to that? The Seventh-day Adventist Church gets very excited about new additions to its membership. We have great reporting sessions at General Conference and so forth. We know that just joining the church is no guarantee of salvation. Many Seventh-day Adventists do not understand the great controversy theme, which is so important to our understanding of the gospel and of understanding of so much of scripture. Shouldn't we also rejoice when we help a fellow church member understanding, understand this important truth? Well, so what is witnessing all about? It is really about sharing the good news about our friend, Jesus Christ. If, in fact, he is our best friend, we should want to talk about him on every occasion that we get. The great controversy is all about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do we understand all the accusations that Satan has made against them? Do we understand God's answers? That is the truth about Jesus that the world needs to hear. So, how often have you had an opportunity to share what you believe about God? It is really not our responsibility to open up opportunities. God is the one who will open the opportunities. We just have to be awake to see them when they happen. Are we watching every day for opportunities that God is placing in our paths to witness to the truth about Him or them? Or are we afraid to speak up about the truth? How many of us miss opportunity after opportunity because we are afraid to speak up? Or we are not sure what to say? Or we do not want to seem to be different? Do we understand clearly why Jesus came to this earth to save human beings? Jim, I think you have something on that. Luke 19.10, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. American Bible Society, 1992. Carrie? James 5, 19 to 20. My brothers and sisters, if any of you wander away from the truth and another one brings him back again, remember this, whoever turns a sinner back from his or her wrong way will save that sinner's soul from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. That's from the Good News Bible. Okay. Charles, you want to... And I really, truly like this. Yes. This is great. This next quotation from Ellen White yeah. is amazing. Uh, this is amazing. This is the essence of Adventism. The plan of redemption had a yet broader and deeper purpose than the salvation of man. Mm -hmm. It was not for this alone that Christ came to this earth. It was not merely that the inhabitants of this little world might regard the law of God as it should be regarded, but it 
was to vindicate it was to vindicate the character of God before the universe this to this result of his great sacrifice its influence upon the intelligence of the other worlds as well as upon man the savior looked forward when just before his crucifixion he said now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast out and who's the prince of this world satan absolutely and i if i am lifted from the earth i will draw all men unto me john well, the man is not in there and draw the, all to me that's right uh, yeah, yeah man is not there <laughs> you're, you're remembering the king james <laughs> Mm, yes, sir. John 12, 31, 30, uh, 32. The act of Christ in dying for the salvation of men would not only make heaven accessible to men, but before all the universe, it would justify God and his Son in their dealing with the rebellion of Satan. It would establish the perpetuity of the law of God and would reveal the nature and the results of sin. Patrick's and Prophets, page 68, two, paragraph 2, uh -huh. 269. Amazing. 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 Yeah. And many of you will remember that the King James Version has as saying, I will draw all men unto me. Well, the men, if you look at the King James Version, is in italics. Now, that doesn't mean it's for emphasis. That means it wasn't there. The original translators put it in there. It wasn't supposed to be there. And cl clearly the passage <coughs> suggests that this is, a, this is a much bigger picture. It in involves the whole universe. It's not just for men here on this earth. Well, okay, I have a question for you. How would you feel about being offered a job working alongside God? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, hard to it's almost hard to so you, know, you wrap your mind around that one, right? Yeah. Is there any better opportunity of which we could take advantage? Is there any safer occupation? Paul wrote, now I don't know, some of those early Christians, they did it and it didn't prove, about to prove to be very safe for them, did it? No. Well, <clears throat> Paul wrote a lot about this whole idea in his book to the Romans. He recognized that, God, that Gentiles have seen God in action in nature. And he recognized that even those who have God's revealed will do not always obey it. Then he went on to describe how salvation works. Notice these very significant words from Romans 3. Diana? Romans 3, verses 1 through 4, and verses 25 and 26. Have the Jews then any advantage over the Gentiles? Or is it there any value in being circumcised? Much indeed in every way. In the first place, God trusted his message to the Jews. But what if some of them were not faithful? Does this mean that God will not be faithful? Certainly not. God must be true, even though every human being is a liar, as the scripture says in verses 25 and 26. You must be shown to be right when you speak. You must win your case when you are being tried. God offered him so that by his blood he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. In the past he was patient and overlooked people's sins, but in the present time he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In this way God shows that he himself is righteous and that he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. Now I want you to look back at those last two verses there, verses 25 and 26 of Romans 3, and you'll see something very remarkable. This is the only verse in the entire Bible that specifically tries to explain why Jesus had to die. The only verse, those two verses together, the only passage in the Bible that specifically, now there's a lot of other verses that give us hints about it, but it doesn't specifically. This is where he says, God offered him so that. This is a specific. And the amazing thing is you look at three times. What's the purpose of it? God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. 
In the past, he was patient and overlooked people's sins, but in the present time, he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. And then, in this way, God shows that he himself is righteous. Oh, yeah, and okay, and then he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. Three if, times, yeah. If you go back up a little bit farther, back where, you, uh, where it says, uh, does this mean God is not faithful? Certainly not. It, was it uh, Phillips? Yeah. When he says, oh, what a ghastly thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was just... Uh, yeah, Phillips' translation, it was very good. His, his paraphrase. <clears throat> so this is a really important thing. Three times Paul said the real purpose of Jesus coming to this earth was to demonstrate the righteousness of God. And of course, it's good for saving man too, but of course, very few Christians have any idea about that. It's all about how I get saved. And to demonstrate and to show is teaching. Yeah. Jesus came as a teacher and not as a penalty payer. Yeah. I listened to a whole lot of debates yeah. and Christian policies. I mean, these guys are aggressively, and uh, I, hours I spent doing this because I want to, I, for what I do for my, um, my interest. And no one, no one, no other Christians have an understanding of the Gospels as we do. You're right. No one. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And that gives us such an opportunity, especially with our Muslim friends. I tell them, I'm not here to convert you, but look at this. Yeah. <laughs> well, traditionally, look at they, this. They, traditionally, they say, well, Jesus came here to die for your sins. Pay the price. It's, it's nothing, no. it's no place yeah. in the Bible yeah. that says, says that. He came here knowing that he was going to die. Yeah. And he came here anyway, but he came here to teach. Right. And uh, with uh, Pil a Pilate in, in uh, John eighteen thirty seven, I think it is, Pilate says, well, what, what is your mission? Well, why are you here? What, what, I came to bear witness to the truth. There you are. To vindicate, I love that word, yeah. to vindicate the character of God. Yeah. Uh, Emilio Canicli used to say, Christ, he, our yeah, salvation I, I is a byproduct yeah. mm -hmm. of I this. Enjoyed it, Emilio. Yeah, I, I loved it, yes. Yeah. By the way, witnessing, Christian witnessing, cannot help it but think about Dr. Bevan. Do you know that name? Mm -hmm. He used to say, witnessing is a beggar telling other beggars or to find food. How yeah. beautiful. <laughs> how Where absolutely find beautiful. How to find <laughs> That's a good one. No, yeah. really, truly, how beautiful. And we've got to, we've got to share. This is beautiful. So Paul here says, the gospel is all about God. Amen. These verses talk about God's righteousness and God putting us right. Not we putting ourselves right or somehow we winning our salvation. None of that. God putting us right. God has won and he will win his case by the many ways in which he has demonstrated his righteousness. So, he picks that up again in Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, in a most amazing verse. And I'm, I'm I read from the Good News Bible, And so, in honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven, on earth, and in the world below, will fall on their knees and all will openly proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In other words, he proved, he demonstrated the truth about God. And when it says all will be on their knees, who does that include? Satan, Satan himself. himself. Satan himself. Yes. When the great controversy is over, even Satan will be down on his knees recognizing that God has always been right and God's ways have always been best. This is in amazing. The, this is in the third coming. Yeah, after the, at the end of the third coming. Third yeah. coming, right, right. There's so much more to the gospel and the truth about Jesus than most people recognize. What can we do to spread that truth to others? I mean, the world is waiting to hear this amazing news. There are so many people in our world who have not really heard and understood the gospel, and why not? Is it because we do not teach it? Well, you have yeah. all the school systems, they have no interest in, in it, and most of the religions are just parroting the same thing. Let's go on to Romans, Romans 10, 10, 14, 14, and, 14 15. and 15. But how can they say to him for help, call, him. call to him for help, if they have not believed? And how can they believe if they have not heard the message? And how can they hear if the message is not proclaimed? 
And how can the message be proclaimed if the messengers are not sent, a, sent out? As the scripture says, how wonderful is the coming of messengers who bring the good news. Amen. But what about those people who have lived and died without hearing about Jesus? How will God judge them? And how will God judge us if we had opportunity to speak to them and we did not? There are multiple reasons why we need to witness. It is not to give people their only chance of being saved, but it is to give them their best chance, and maybe another chance that they hadn't, they hadn't understood before. I think in the Old Testament, and at least a couple of places I can give the references, um, and their blood is going to be on your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are powerful statements. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you keep abreast of the news that comes up about events in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we're no different than other churches, you will read about mass evangelistic efforts that baptize thousands of people at one time. How many of those people are still in the church and growing in their knowledge of God after one to two years? What should or can we do to help new members grow and stay faithful? Kerry? Has every... Has anyone ever asked you, how is your day going? Or, is everything all right with you today? What if you ask God those questions? God, how is your day going? <laughs> what kind of response do you think you would receive? Possibly, it would be one like this. My day has been extremely difficult. Tears filled my eyes at 1,000 refugee camps filled with cold, hungry, crying children. I walked the streets of the world's crowded cities and wept with the homeless and destitute. My heart breaks over abused women and frightened children sold into sexual slavery. I, witness, I witnessed the ravages of war, the devastating effects of natural disaster, and the painful agony of debilitating deadly diseases. Would you respond back by asking, but God, is there anything that makes you rejoice? Is there anything that brings joy to your heart? Is there anything that makes you sing? And that's from the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide for Monday, June 29. Well, what about you out there? Are you happy with the life you're living? Are you convinced that you're obeying God's will for you? Well, there's some interesting verses in Luke 15 to see what would make God really happy. Diana, I think you have something on that. Is that yours? Or is it Charles? Uh, Charles, Charles I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and carried back home. Then you call your friends and neighbors together and say to them, I'm so happy I found my lost ship. Let us celebrate. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 respectable people who do not need to repent. When she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says to them, I'm so happy I found the coin I lost. Let us celebrate. In the same way, I tell you, the angels of God rejoice over one sinner who repents. But the father called his servants, hurry. He said, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Then go and get the prize calf and kill it. And let us celebrate with the feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. But we had to celebrate and be happy because your brother was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. Good news, Bible. All heaven rejoices when the lost are found. In a world, world filled with disease, disaster, and death, we can bring joy to the heart of God by sharing the good news of salvation with others. One of the greatest motivations to share Christ's love is the knowledge that that witnessing brings joy the heart of God. Every time we reveal his joy with his love, 
all of heaven sings adult Sabbath school bible study guide for monday june 29. Think about it. You know, those are very familiar parables that Jesus gave. There was one, the, the lost sheep, there was one out of a hundred. Then there was the lost coin, one out of ten. And then there's the prodigal son, one out of two. And they, they, they went back. And God says, in response to his telling those stories, what is it that makes God rejoice? Bringing one person back to him. One person makes heaven Rejoice. Amazing. Uh, toward the, uh, what I've, one of the reasons I believe why people's hearts are so callous now, especially you go to Europe and all these cathedrals are empty. Yeah. Because Christ's name has been misrepresented all these years mm -hmm. and people have become callous. Yeah. Okay, I have a question for you out there. Wouldn't you like to make heaven rejoice? Wouldn't you like to be responsible for making God happy? It has been demonstrated again and again that the best way to witness is to speak to a friend that you know personally and convince him or her to listen to the truth. Personal witnessing is most effective. We can have these big campaigns and we get a lot of people coming into the truth maybe, but very often those people will wander back away again and, and, and uh, wander back out of the church again unless there's a personal atta attachment to somebody there that's a friend, someone who says, oh, I didn't see you in church, why, you know, or whatever. So the best kind of witnessing is when we try to witness to a personal friend. And personal witnessing makes God and the angels rejoice because sooner or later, someone is going to choose to follow God and leave his or her sinful ways. Okay, Diane, I think you got it. The Dead Sea Marks? The Dead Sea Marks, the Earth's lowest elevation. At 1,388 feet below sea level, it ranks as the world's lowest sea. The River Jordan flows out of the Sea of Galilee and winds its way through the Jordan Valley until it dead ends in the Dead Sea. The hot, dry climate with the intense sunlight and desert conditions causes the water to evaporate quite rapidly. Since the Dead Sea's salt and mineral content is 33.7%, wow. little survives in its waters. There are no fish, plants, only some micro microbes and bacteria at the bottom. In our Christian lives, if the grace of God that flows into our lives does not flow out to others, we will become stagnant and all but lifeless like the Dead Sea. As Christians, that's not how we are to live. That's from the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide for Tuesday, June 30th. I've had the privilege of visiting the Dead Sea two or three times in my life and the salt content is just unbelievable. You cannot get that stuff in your mouth or your eyes. Oh, you, it's like a fire. Oh, man, <laughs> it's really bad. I'm thinking also of the heat and the dryness. Yeah. We're, yeah. Today seems to be a very good example of that in this area. And it's, uh, it's amazing that anything it, lives in that area. Yeah. They're having a big ra a big battle down there about what to do with the Dead Sea. The, the hotels want to pipe water in from the ocean down into the Dead Sea to raise, because the, the, the Dead Sea is actually shrinking. It's getting smaller and smaller, so the people who go down from the hotel have to walk quite a ways out to get to the water. By contrast, there are people who use the salt, the, the special salts that are in that sea, to make... Uh, skin lotions and all kinds of various things like this, and they don't want pumping in seawater that'll mess up their business. <laughs> They're having quite a battle over there about uh, whether we like this Dead Sea so dead. But we don't want to be like the Dead Sea. Remember that the truth about God is often compared to fresh water. Um, on the last, and I'm reading John 7, 37 and 38. Actually, I think that's yours, is it, Jim? On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and he said in a loud voice, Whoever is thirsty shall come to me, and whoever believes in me shall drink. As the scripture says, streams of living water will pour out from 
his Actually, side. Actually, it's life-giving water, it says. Streams of life-giving water will pour out from his side. Good News Bible. Carrie? Luke 6, 38. Give to others and God will give to you. Indeed, you will receive a full measure, a generous helping poured into your hands, all that you can hold. The measure you use for others is the one that God will use for you. And that comes from the Good News Bible. Okay, Charles, Ellen White had some words to say about that as well. God could have reached his object in saving sinners without our aid. But in order for us to develop a character like Christ, we must share in his work. In order to enter into, the, into his joy, the joy of seeing souls redeemed by his sacrifice, we must participate in his labors for their redemption. Ellen White, Desire of Ages, uh, 142, paragraph 2. Okay, I know you have another paragraph there, but I want to interrupt for a second. Sure. Why is it important for us to participate in sharing the gospel? Well, you do, uh, was it Philippians 2, 4 and 5? Uh, let this mind be in you as is in Christ Jesus. Is that Who is that being right? in the form of God thought yeah. not robbery. That's yeah. Philippians 2, chapter that's four, 2, four, five, 5. All the way up to 11. I read yeah. to the... Yeah, yeah we read the uh, latter part there right, earlier right, today. Yeah. But that's, uh, and that is salvation. Right. That is healing. Mm -hmm. What needs healing? If I have pancreatic cancer, is that as important as changing the way I think about God? Yeah, I, I have temp been tempted to talk to the staff I work with done at the clinic sometime about this, but uh, I've always been a little reluctant. Maybe I shouldn't be so reluctant. Is, you know, which is better to save, say, 10 patients and you, you treat them and you add one year to their lives? Let's just say Mm. By chance, okay? You, you save 10 years of life. Or to take one person and add 10 years to his life, which is better? Or add eternity to their life. Why well, and so that's it, my it, next it, point. It, it, See, it, it, what if you could add a million years to someone's life? Wouldn't that be better than all, everything else you can do put together? With joy. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. this, the, remember John, it was John yeah. 14, 15, 16, mm -hmm. 17? Came that you can have joy, and you can have joy now. Yes, Exactly. Okay. As I see this, mm -hmm. one of the things I've thought about is that Christianity, I think, is the only religion that is participatory. Mm -hmm. we, God says to us, you're part of this. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it to you. We're doing it together. And I think we often forget that. We sit back and say, God, what are you going to give me? Yeah. What are you going to do for me? And we have That's to think that we yeah. have to be part of that action partnership partnership yes that's really truly what it is you see uh, 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 bear this yoke it takes two oxen yeah to pull a yoke yeah. you know i give you my yoke my yoke is my burden is light how beautiful yeah you're right the christian adventism really truly the only um, yeah, others, uh, yes, uh, but not bra bragging about it. You, you do this, 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 your saved kind of thing. But even the concept of him being our father, that's nonsense for Republican attack. They cannot even think about it that way. So, mm -hmm. but uh, when it's, uh, when it share the sense of Christianity, people do respond, by the way. They mm -hmm. do, do respond. Um, mm -hmm. This is not speaking from theory. This is for real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so. Okay, Charles, you want to give us your second paragraph there? Yes, sir. Those who would be overcomers must be drawn out of themselves. And the only thing which will accomplish this great work is to become intensely interested in the salvation of others. How beautiful. Ellen White, Fundamentals of Christian Education, 207. Intensely mm. are we, truly, intensely interested in the salvation of others? May I, may I say this? The, the start of Adventism fascinates me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fascinates me. They lived on faith. 
I jokingly say, I don't live too far from Andrews for years, and I jokingly say, Andrews lives on faith, Loman Lindell lives on works. But anyway, that's just the joke. But you know, I mean, I, we have to learn to live on faith. We've got to all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've got to, that, that day is coming mm -hmm. sooner than we think. Why is it that we're not witnessing the way we should be? We don't have the message. Well, unfortunately, in many cases, we're, <laughs> that's we're, pretty not, we're not. That's pretty blunt. <laughs> but if you don't understand the truth about God, how can you accomplish the well, work he gave you to do? If you don't have a message that you're excited about. That's right. No, well, then. come on and join me and become a great <laughs> <laughs> Not about the way that the Lord himself says. I think it's Revelation chapter 3. You think you're rich? Yeah. yeah. Let me tell poor you. Naked. You're poor, naked, and miserable. Wow. So, is it we, we, we fail to witness because we do not want people to think strange things about us? Hmm. Uh, is it because we are so selfish that we do not want to give up our time to witness? Totally really, when they wonderful. find out who we are, their jaws drop loose, hang loose. I, this is for real. Yeah. So, wow, didn't know that such a group of people do exist. Yeah. This is for real. Yeah. What, have we, what have been your personal experiences in witnessing for others? Have you tried it? Praying with others? Have you tried that? Ministering to the needs of others? <laughs> I had to smile. Um, we are in this time of shutdown because of the virus spreading around the community and so forth. And so some of my, many of my office visits these days have to be by telephone. And I, I, I call up and uh, here's this lady who is unfortunately somewhere near the end of her life. She's on dialysis and she's got a bunch of other problems like that. And she comes, she's, she's been one of my, well, I, sh I could tell you that she first came to see me about 15 years ago with tears. She was crying because she had just seen another doctor who said, your kidneys are bad. You're, you're going to be dead in six months. Thank and I you said, very much. oh, no, <laughs> no, no, we're not going to give up that easy. And here she is. 15 plus years later and you know we all we've always known that her kidneys were in bad shape she's finally probably going to have to be on dialysis but i i've always offered to pray for her and her her she's now somewhat disabled because of the problems and so forth so her granddaughter is taking care of her and so the granddaughter was handling the telephone and so forth and um so I said, would you like to me to pray for you? Oh, absolutely, please pray for me. This is over the telephone. So I prayed for over the telephone, and I finished praying. The, doc the daughter said, okay, thank you very much, goodbye. And the lady said, I love that man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was dead. always her response. Just then. someone who prays for you. That's so unusual, huh? Yeah. Surely we would all recognize that true loyalty to Christ requires a commitment to do His will, and we know exactly what that will involves. 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. This is good, and it pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to know the truth. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow to do what He has promised, as some think. Instead, He is patient with you, because He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants all to turn away from their sins. Wow. He does not want... How many does He want to be destroyed? None. None. He does not want any to be destroyed. He wants, a, he wants them to turn away from their sins. I don't think we realize how patient God is with us. Oh, man. Hmm. For over 6,000 years, God has been fighting a war against the misrepresentations of Satan. God has done everything possible to correct misinformation and to help us to understand his character and his government more fully. The gospel or good news is never about us. It is about God, about Jesus Christ and God's plan for us to join him 
in a perfect kingdom forever. Acts 13, 47, For this is the commandment that the Lord has given us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles so that all the world may be saved. That was, that's God's plan. That's the New Testament version. Here's the Old Testament version of God's plan. Isaiah 49, verse 6, The Lord said to me, I have a greater task for you, my servant. Not only will you restore to greatness the people of Israel who have survived, but I will also make you a light to the nation so that all the world may be saved. I mean, is there any question about what God's ideal is? There shouldn't be. No. Mm. I mean, there's clear passages in both Old and New Testament. He would like everybody to be saved. Well, from Genesis 12, way back in the time when God called Abraham until our day, his foremost purpose in calling any person or group of people has been to make them witnesses to others about God's love and care for them. I mean, right there up front, Genesis 12, 1 to 3, uh, Abraham is going to do all this. I mean, God's going to do all this. Say good things for you to Abraham so that you'll be what? A witness. You'll be a witness. You'll be an example to the, unit, to the whole world. Oh, yeah. yeah. A blessing. Specifically, is even a blessing to the whole world. Yeah, well, wasn't that Israel's entire reason to exist? Yes. Uh, it, uh, does Ellen White, I think it's in the Bible somewhere too, that it was not the purpose that one war is to be fought as the move from Egypt to Canaan. Not mm -hmm. one bloodshed, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Old Testament tells us about the story of the Hebrew people who turned away, turned inward, I'm sorry, and cared more about themselves than they did about sharing the gospel with others. Hmm. With their neighbors, even. Could, they, could that happen to the Seventh-day Adventist church? Maybe we should ask, has that happened? <laughs> could that be true of our individual Sabbath school classes? Why do so many people think of the church as a kind of a social club that we like to attend, perhaps to see our friends once a week? But that's for real. <laughs> Let's face it. Yeah, well, that's real. There's nothing wrong with that. The thing is that God wants us to keep making new friends. That is true. Not for us to just meet together with the old friends. God actually says repeatedly that the only reason for having a church is for spreading the gospel. Are we doing that? If not, we probably are wasting our time going to church. Well, why should we witness? Well, first of all, we want to be partners with God. We talked about that earlier. We want to make heaven rejoice by sharing the good news with others. We talked about that. But witnessing also has a massive ben beneficial effect on us. It has often been demonstrated that the best way to find out if you understand something is to try to explain it to someone else. <coughs> I... I will tell a story without giving too many details, so I don't want anyone to know exactly. <laughs> Look back. One time in my life, actually I can tell you that before I became a physician, which I am and have been for more than 50 years, I was trained as a pastor. I had a degree in theology. And uh, when I came to Loma Linda here, and I began to attend classes, and I got from, from attending Dr. Graham Maxwell's classes, recognized that there was another way that I had never even heard about of looking at so many of these Bible stories and so forth. And one time, our class decided we were going to have a, our, our medical school class, going to have a picnic down on the beach, Friday night, Friday afternoon. And so, okay, this is exciting. So I had a little tiny car, a Carmen Ghia, a form of an old Volkswagen, and I invited two or three other people to, that, to ride in my car down there. And I says, I was so excited. I says, you know what I learned in class? Jesus had to die because... To vindicate. Well, and I started through that process, and I step by step, and somewhere in the middle, <laughs> I couldn't figure out where to go next. So you learn, if, if, you, you learn after you try it a few times, do you understand this or don't you understand? If you can't, follow it all the way through, then it's time to go back and do some more studying. Mm. 
And maybe try some different Bible translations, too. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> wouldn't that be the true of our understanding of the beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? How many of those signal doctrines that we believe in, and many of, we share, many of which we share with other Christian churches, can you give a clear, convincing argument for from the Bible? That's the question. Well, could you clearly and convincingly explain what you believe to a person from the world who knows nothing about Christianity? Think of the stories of the apostles, Peter, Paul, and others were willing to give their lives, give up their lives, and become martyrs while doing their best to represent God correctly. Why did they do that? They were filled with love for God. Jim? Love must dwell in the heart. A thoroughgoing Christian draws his motives of action from his deep heart, deep heart love for his master. Up through the roots of his affection for Christ springs an unselfish interest in his brethren. Ellen White, Ministry of Healing, page 490. I think back to the time when Jesus first called his disciples. And what did they think when, you know, here there's a big crowd here and he says, you know, I want you and I want you follow me and you and you follow me. And what did they think they were being chosen for? They were going to be a part of the cabinet in the new government. One of them was going to be the new prime minister. Yeah. They wanted, uh, later they, two of them came with their father. Please, Jesus, could we sit on the two sides of this you? This is just before the cross. Yeah, just before the cross. Was that, that's what yeah. they were talking about. What if Jesus had said, um, actually, I'm, I'm choosing you to be martyrs. <laughs> they would laugh. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, that's what really happened. Right, right. Yes. No, look, even after witnessing over the weekend what really had happened, he saw, they all saw the empty tomb. Come back. Sorry, boys, I misled you. I, I'm going to go fishing. This is after they knew that Christ yeah. rose. And Peter leads them, let's go fishing. <laughs> this is nonsense. We went the road with the wrong guy. Well, <laughs> I'll say a little bit of a word in Peter's defense. God, Jesus told him to go back to Galilee and wait till he met them there. So he had to go fishing. Yeah, he, yeah he was <laughs> there. What do we do back here? We get to Galilee. What do we do? We go fishing, right? <laughs> and, then, and then Jesus, I always have to laugh. You know, Jesus showed him how to really fish. <laughs> they yes, had so many yes. fish in the net that it was breaking. Yes, yes. So what does the life and death of Jesus teach us about God? Can you explain that? Is that important to you? Is the truth about God important enough to you that you would be willing to die for it? Like Peter and Paul did? The Savior's commission to the disciples included all the believers. It includes all believers in Christ to the end of time. I'm sorry, that's yours, Carrie. It's all right. I, did, did somewhere... The numbering on this stuff get. I've been trying to figure out exactly where well, you were. It's a little maybe, bit off. <laughs> the numbering may be a little bit off. I don't know. No worries. No, it's all right. Under number 29, to be 27, 28, the Savior's Commission. It's on page six. Half the first. I'm on page six. I don't see it anywhere. That's okay. Yeah, it's 27, I'll go, I think. I'll go ahead and read it. The Savior's commission to the disciples included all the believers. It includes all believers in Christ to the end of time. Oh, it is a fatal mistake to suppose that the work of saving souls depends alone on the ordained minister. All to whom the heavenly inspiration has come are put in trust with the gospel. That means every one of you out there, every one of us in here, are expected to share the gospel. All who receive the life of Christ or are ordained to work for the salvation of their fellow man. For this work the church has, was established, and all who take upon themselves its sacred vows are thereby pledged to be co-workers with Christ. And I think you have another verse there, another passage there, Carrie. Christ intends that his ministers shall be educators of the church and gospel work. They are to teach the people how to seek and save the lost. But is this the work they are doing? Alas, how many are toiling to fan the spark of life in the church that is ready to die? Wow. Kind of says it, doesn't it? How many churches are attended 
like sick lambs by those who ought to be seeking for the lost sheep. And all the time, millions upon millions without Christ are perishing. Okay, divine love. I, get this, I think this is yours, Charles. Yeah. The divine love. Yeah. Saviors. On the side there. Yeah, so, so. Um, I see the persecution. Yeah. Oh, uh, all right. Sorry. Divine love has been stirred to its unfathomable depths for the sake of men, and angels marvel to behold in uh, recip recipients of so great love a mere surface gratitude. Angels marvel at man's shallow appreciation of the love of God. Heaven stands indignant at the neglect shown to the souls of men. Would we know how Christ regards it? How would a father and mother feel? Did they know that their child, lost in the cold and snow, had been passed by and left to perish by those who might have saved it? Can you imagine? Just yeah. imagine that. Yeah. Just mm. Would they not be terribly grieved, wildly ignorant, indignant, would they not denounce those murderers with wrath, hot as their tears, intense as their love? The suffering of every man are suffering of God's child, and those who reach out to helping hand to their no, perishing, no helping hand. with no helping hand um, to their perishing fellow beings, provoke his righteous anger. This is the wrath of the Lamb. Wow. To those who claim fellowship with Christ, yet have been indifferent to the needs of the fellow men, he will declare in the great judgment day, I know you not where you are from. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Wow. Desire of Ages, 825, paragraph 3 and 4. She writes so beautifully, so mm. beautifully. Yes. Yeah. Just God will say, okay, if you're not willing to work with me, why should, why should I make you a part of my kingdom? Why should I make you a part of my people? So why did it take so long for Christians to spread out from Jerusalem? Do they really need persecution to motivate them to believe? You remember that God says, spread the gospel first where? In to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and then, then to Judea, Judea and Samaria, Samaria and then and to, to the, the upper, uttermost, uttermost parts, parts of, the world. of the world. Well, three and a half years have gone by, and they're still sitting in Jerusalem. And God says, no, you need to do something else. And what happened? Stephen gets stoned, and mm. suddenly there's Paul and others that are determined to wipe out Christians completely. So what did it take to get the church to finally spread out of Jerusalem? Persecution. 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 Do we need that again? The Diana? persecution that came upon the church in Jerusalem resulted in giving a great impetus to the work of the gospel. Success had attended the ministry of the wor word in that place. There was danger that the disciples would linger there too long, unmindful of the Savior's commission to go to all of the world. Forgetting that strength to resist evil is best gained by aggressive service, they began to think that they had no work so important as that of shielding the church in Jerusalem from the attacks of mm. the enemy. Instead of educating the new converts to carry the gospel to those who had not heard it, they were in danger of taking a course that would lead all to be satisfied with what had been accomplished. To scatter his representatives abroad where they could work for others, God permitted persecution to come upon them, Driven from Jerusalem, the believers went everywhere preaching the word. That's from the Acts of the Apostles, page 105. And I'm going to take just a moment. We don't have much time left, but, well, I, I won't take time to look it up. I'll just tell you the story. In Acts 11, you read toward the end of that chapter, you'll find out how it finally really happened. People who are not even named came from Libya and Cyprus to Antioch in Syria. 
Think of Libya, Cyprus, and Syria today. They came to Antioch and Syria and began, this preaching, began preaching the gospel to everyone, not just to former Jews. And that's how the, 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 the gospel really got started spread, spreading out to, to Gentiles. And the church in Jerusalem says, what's happening up there in Antioch? We better send somebody to investigate. And they charged up there and says, oh, it was, they sent Barnabas. And Barnabas says, this is a good idea. I better get somebody to help me. He called Paul, who was working not too far away. And, and that, that's what really started the great evangelism efforts for, for, for Gentiles. Well, do we need persecution? It's coming. Yes. If we could read Matthew 28, 19, 28, 18 through 20, Mark 16, 15 to 16, Luke 24, 46 to 49, and John 20, 21, we would discover that the ending of each gospel, it's a message from Jesus that we are to go out and share the good news with everyone in the world. Every gospel ends that way. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Hmm. Are we taking these challenges seriously? What are we doing personally to spread the gospel? And um, my, if my, I might, I'd like to add, Ellen White had said, you might remember where it's from. She says, what we neglect to do in easier times, we will need to do it in very difficult circumstances. Yeah. yeah. Repeatedly, Jesus told us that if we want to see the Father, we need to look at Jesus. If we have seen him, we have seen the Father. Try to think of all the things we have learned about God through the life and death of Jesus. Contrast that with the incredible number of lies and falsehoods that have been spread by Lucifer, Satan, since he left heaven. Is God a vindictive judge? I mean, think about the pe how many people say this. Is God a vindictive judge? Is he a wrathful tyrant? Not at all. He's our loving Heavenly Father, and he wants every one of us to be saved. That's his goal. Can we demonstrate that in the Bible, even in places like the third angel's message? Does that sound like he really loves us? Well, if you understand it correctly, it does. We need to remember that witnessing is simply telling people about our best friend, God. Why wouldn't we want to participate in that mission? If God so committed to sh is so committed to sharing the good news, why doesn't he send his angels to do it? Couldn't they do a better job than us anyway? Well, angel is another word for messenger. Yeah. And Ellen White was a messenger of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we should be edu get educated that we become messengers. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, We've already it's on our shoulders. Yeah. We've already suggested that God gives us this responsibility because we need it. We need that experience. We need that excitement. Yes. See, so, but he also said, if you stay quiet, somebody else will do it. The rocks. The rocks will cry out. Yeah. The rocks will cry out. That could happen. We need to learn truth so well, backwards and forwards, that we can explain it to anyone who asks us, 1 Peter 3.15. There's no better time to witness than at times of crisis. When someone is moved, or when they take up a new job, or perhaps when there is an international crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic, isn't that a good time to share our picture of God? Have you thought about asking somebody if they think that God is the one who sent the COVID-19? See how they respond? Aren't people asking themselves, where is God in all this? What better time is there to speak up about God? There may be lots of things that we can learn about God from nature, but we look at nature also and see many disasters. Is God responsible for all those disasters? Why do insurance policies call them acts That's of God? So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, when the tsunami came, there were respected Seventh-day Adventist pastors saying that God did this. Yep. We may learn a lot of things, lots of things from God, from nature, but it will not reveal to us why there is both good and evil and how evil got started. So we can, so what can we do? First and foremost, we need to understand and study the life and death of Jesus backwards and forwards until we know it like the back of our hands. Then when someone raises a question, we will be able to come up with the right answer, one that puts God in a good light. 
we also know that witnessing is one of heaven's means to bring joy to the heart of God. For what greater goal could we possibly hope? We should witness because it is one of the best ways to grow our Christian experience. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most important ways we could go to become more like Jesus. We looked at Luke 15. It talks about the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and so forth. And it says so many good things about God. It tells us that God is not willing to let us go easily. He's, he's after us. And in, in biblical times, if you lost a sheep, you, were, you're not, you did not dare to come back home unless you brought the sheep or what was left of the carcass. When someone had sheep in those days, they knew every one of their sheep by name. And what happened when the shepherd found his lost sheep? He came home rejoicing, inviting his friends to celebrate with him. That is God's response when one of his children comes back to him. In a world of crisis, when disease, death, lost jobs, and fear are everywhere, it is a perfect time to talk about God. And there is nothing else we could do for God that would make him happier than to speak about him correctly and encourage others to love him as we do. Jim? The spirit of unselfish labor for others gives depth, stability, and Christ-like loveliness to the character and brings peace and happiness to its possessor. Steps to Christ, page 80. Do we, do we want peace? Do we want happiness? I mean, is there any question about that? Do we believe that it is more blessed to give than to receive, Acts 20, 35? Think of each individual that you know personally and with whom you associate from time to time. Ask God to create an opportunity for you to witness to that person, person with loving spiritual guidance. God will find an opportunity. You just need to be ready when it happens. So, looking at what is happening in our world right now, isn't the cur current economic and health crisis an opportunity for us to talk about God Think about your situation. Think about the people you associate with. Think about your church. Do you come to church just to say hi to your friends? Or could we come to church and say, what can we learn about God from this crisis? What can we learn about God from the life and death of Jesus that will help us to know how to relate to people in this crisis? Let's pray. Our kind and wonderful Father, it is such a blessing to talk about you and to think about this whole issue and, and, and the truth about you and, and what Jesus taught and showed in his life. We want to be more like him. Think of what it would be like if we had millions of people around the world acting and behaving and teaching like Jesus. The gospel could be finished so quickly. And now we pray that this opportunity that we've had through this Sabbath lesson and this program to witness may be a, an inspiration to all who listen is our prayer in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen.